uh, tuberculosis skin test is uh, literally, again, one of the oldest tests in medicine. It was described in a, a scientific paper that was published in 1908 and is basically used in almost the same form um, for the last hundred years. Um, and uh, we've learned over a period of time that uh, it works reasonably well but is far from perfect. Um, so it gives lots of false positive and false negative results. That's the major problem with it. Um, in addition, it's inconvenient. Patients have to come back two days after it's placed to have the results read. Um, the people reading the results sometimes are inaccurate. So um, you have those problems. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, people who have had the TB vaccine can get false positive results. So there are lots of um, problems with it. So the, the tuberculosis skin test um, uh, works in the following way. Um, you get an injection that contains proteins that are made by tuberculosis. Um, and if your body has previously been infected with tuberculosis, your immune system will remember, in a sense, what tuberculosis looks like. And so if you inject uh, these proteins that come from tuberculosis under the skin, your immune system, as I said, will remember that and cause an immune reaction, some swelling and redness at the site of the infection. And that's how the TB skin test works. Um, in, in the last several years, um, we've come to understand at a very sophisticated level exactly how the immune system um, uh, recognizes those tuberculosis proteins um, and exactly what's going on there, the sort of molecules that are being secreted and um, the immune cells that are involved. Um, and scientists working in a variety of labs realized that we could essentially recreate that skin test in a test tube. Um, and not only could we recreate it in a test tube, um, which makes it easier for the patient, they don't have to come back, they just give a blood sample. Um, we could refine very much, um, or scientists could refine very much the proteins that we used so that now we can use proteins that only represent tuberculosis and not other kinds of infections that are common. And so the problem of false positive results um, should be um, uh, much easier to deal with. And, and so scientists worked on this, a couple of companies developed commercial uh, applications of this, tests that are marketed now. Um, and we and many other groups um, have worked to see, in fact, how well these things do in actual practice. Um, and I think most of us think this is going to be a real advance um, and will help us uh, more accurately identify people who've been infected with TB previously um, so that we can, you know, treat them um, and not worry about treating people who just have false positive tests, but really focus on the people who are at risk for getting TB and and have a much more precise tool to work with.